Chapter 30 Dominic stared at Francesco. He could see the resemblance now. Francesco's eyes were the same color and shape as his own. They both loved animals, and they had the same laugh. Why hadn't he recognized it before? My great-grandfather, he thought. He longed to tell Francesco all about it, but he knew that Francesco would think he was crazy or sick in the head from the earthquake. Meanwhile, Antonio had to go to the bathroom, and Francesco was ready to take him outside when the man behind them told him about the indoor toilets. Dominic was to keep their seats until they returned. But as he watched them walk away, an odd fear suddenly gripped him. Maybe he should go after them. Maybe he shouldn't let them out of his sight. Now that he had found them, and he knew who they really were and who he was to them, Dominic wanted them close by. He waited anxiously for them to return, and when they finally did, Dominic sighed with relief. As they, step, as they stepped forward in line, they heard a woman in front of them talking about the Italian Aid Society. She pointed to a table that people were crowding around. They will help you find the people you are to meet, the woman was saying. Dominic and Francesco looked at the table and then at each other. They both knew that their time together was coming to an end. Francesco, Dominic began. Yes, Francesco answered. I don't know. Dominic fumbled for the right words. He felt suddenly embarrassed and lowered his eyes to the floor. It's just that everything is happening so fast, he blurted out, and soon you'll be off to New Jersey and I might not see you for a while. Francesco nodded his head as if he understood. Dominic looked up to meet his large, dark eyes, eyes that matched his own. I'll never forget you, Dominic whispered, all of you, and I hope you won't forget me. Forget? Francesco smiled. Who could forget Familia? He reached out and hugged Dominic hard. And this time, for the first time, Dominic hugged him back. What about me? Antonio squeaked. Dominic grinned and bent down to give him a big hug, too. I bet you won't even recognize me the next time you see me, Dominic, Antonio announced. No, why not? Dominic asked. Because I'm going to eat so much food here in America that I will look as if... As if you are made like a mushroom? Dominic finished his sentence. The three boys stood silent for a second, and then they all began to laugh as they wrapped their arms around each other in one big hug. They stood in line for a long, long time until it had stopped moving altogether. People had begun to sit on their suitcases in bundles. Dominic was glad that the line wasn't moving. They hadn't slept much the night before, and they hadn't eaten in hours. All the excitement of landing had left them exhausted. Dominic and Antonio slumped down against the back of a large basket beside a woman nursing a baby. It felt so good to sit that Dominic decided not to get back up until he had to. He felt his eyes begin to droop. Dominic watched as Antonio tapped his grimy little fingers over the brightly painted red and yellow flowers on his concertina. The baby in the mother's arms beside them began to fuss, and Antonio offered to play a lullaby to help calm him. The song was so soothing that Dominic found it hard to keep his eyes open. Just a little nap, he mumbled as his head began to fall onto his chest. He thought he heard Francesco call his name over the din of voices and the soft melody of the concertina, and then he heard nothing at all.